All right, looks like we're live. Hello, everyone, and welcome to yet another Zeus in session. How about that? So let's make a little bit of an announcement and officially start the stream as usual. Let me grab my Discord server. Uh, gently, gently grab my Discord server and do the usual thing I do all the time uh, live on Twitch. And what are we doing today on Twitch television? Today we are developing a new graphics library in C. That's right. So let me give you the link to the Twitch channel, Twitch TV slash sorting, and I'm gonna ping everyone who's interested in being pinged. There we go. The stream has been officially started. All right, all right, all right, all right. So hello, hello everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So uh, why do we need to develop another C library? Well, we really don't need to actually there's a lot of c libraries already but uh here's an interesting thing uh quite often uh, i need to quickly prototype something graphical right so basically i want to just uh maybe debug something but I'm, i want to debug something in a visual manner right i want to draw the lines i want to draw some dots somewhere here and there and, and you've seen me doing that quite often right so what i usually do is i basically start like uh code um, maybe write up i was looking for, for the right verb I, I just write up a quick c program that renders the graphical primitives into the memory pixel by pixel and then i save that memory as a ppm image right so this is like sort of like the easiest way for me to to just quickly prototype something graphical because you don't have to set anything up you don't have to do download any like third party dependencies or anything like that uh right uh, so and i've been doing that for quite some time already and i'm thinking why don't i just take this same thing that i implement every time i need to like you know quickly prototype like just you know uh, write up something graphical and put it into a simple graphical library like a header only graphical library that's just a single file i can do, like bring it uh, bring it in i don't have to install any third party dependencies or anything like that and it's just like a bunch of primitives that let you draw things like lines rectangles um, circles triangles and stuff like that you know the basic primitives so the, then you can just like draw something like diagrams and whatnot so should be pretty straightforward and i think something something also interesting because um i think i haven't developed uh like triangle rendering on stream so it could be kind of interesting to implement that so that's basically the idea for today's streams all right, so we need to come up with a name for, for the library, right? So I was thinking how I want to call this library. And I think I've come up with a pretty cool name. So uh, let, me, let me actually show you something. So if you take um, an English word pencil, right? And you translate it to Ukrainian, right? It uh, sounds like Olivets, Olivets. I, I don't know how to pronounce it correctly. I didn't speak Ukrainian, but the interesting thing of, of this um, about this word is that if you spell it in Latin, uh, it might look like this. Right. So, and as far as I know, it's not like purely Ukrainian thing. So there are some other um, other Slavic languages where it is like that. For example, Bosnian. Right. It's it's literally also pencil. So it's sort of like a very much Slavic name for a pencil, which is a good name for a graphics, like a simple graphics library. So we're making like a like a pencil library. And since it ends like with C, we can actually make it an extension. And olive is, you know, the 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 fruit, the, the berry. Is olive a berry, by the way? Does anyone know? Right. I need to Google that. Is olive a berry? Is olive a berry? The small fruits that grow on olive trees. They belong to a group of fruit called droops or stone fruits. Very interesting. So they're not, um, and they are related to mangoes, cherries, peaches, almonds, and pistachios. Okay, that's very interesting. So basically, you can treat it as an olive, but with an extension, it's a, an olivets, which is like a pencil, right, in Ukrainian and Bo Bosnian as well. Uh, so, which is kind of cool. <clears throat> 
So th this is gonna be the name, right? It's gonna be a single file that we're gonna that you're gonna include in your C, uh, C program, and you'll be able to do like a simple graphics primitive. It's not berry. Berry has lots of seeds uh, across whole fruit like berry or watermelon. All it has one uh, big seed like mango. So that means that cherry is also not a berry. Okay, that's very interesting. <clears throat> okay, so this is going to be the name for, for, for the library. So it's going to be Olive C. Uh, so an extension is going to be very, uh, very important for this thing. Right? Olive uh, C. So this is going to be the folder and let's create Olive C. Right, so and since it... Well, I mean, it's not a header file, but you'll have to actually include it. <clears throat> Hello, hello, welcome, welcome everyone. A Serbian, Bosnian, Croatian, and um, Montenegrin uh, all have the same word for this. Oh, okay, that's that's pretty cool. Um, all right, so how are we gonna be approaching all that? Even though it's a C file, I think you're gonna be including it anyway. Um, even though it feels wrong, but it only feels wrong. So technically it's possible, so there's nothing wrong with that. So let's actually uh, code up in include guard. Uh, olive C, uh, right, and uh, I'm going to define this thing, and I'm going to do and if, there we go, so this is what we're going to have in here, and I also want to maybe have some sort of an example that actually uses this thing, right, so, <laughs> excuse me, uh, we're going to include uh, Olive C, uh, and uh, I'm going to create the, uh, the entry point. That's illegal. Well, why is that illegal? I mean, the the program is going to compile, so I don't think it's going to be that much illegal. <clears throat> um, all right, so let me actually put the um, hello world. So this is the hello world. And I'm going to include the IO. So also, I think we need some sort of a build SH, right? Mm, so it's going to be bmsh uh -huh. and I'm going to enable all of the possible warnings and we're going to just try to compile the example and see how it works. So I also need to make this executable and I'm going to just run uh, this entire thing. Okay, so we have an example and if I run the example it says hello world, right. So, in uh, this example, I'm going to create a bunch of uh, constants, right? So, I'm going to create two constants which denote the size of an image that I want to generate, right? So, we're going to have a width uh, and let's do 800 by 600, right? So, it's pretty, uh, pretty small image, right? Pretty small image. Uh, Apocryphos, thank you so much for eight months of tier one subscription. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Really appreciate it. Mm, all right so and let's allocate some static memory right so 32 and let's say pixels right so this is going to be height this is going to be width there we go maybe it also makes sense to mark it as static <sighs> okay so what's going to be the first thing that we're going to implement for the um, for the graphics library so let's implement uh, a thing that fills up the whole canvas, right? You know, the, the usual thing I do. I'm going to implement functions in the example, and as I finish implementing them, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be moving them into the olive.c, right? So that's going to be the idea essentially here. Uh, so, 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 so. Alrighty. So let's do something. Uh, we're going to prefix all of the functions with the name of the library, like olive. Uh, maybe I'm gonna like literally, you know, include sort of like the full name of the of the library as a prefix. I think it, it makes sense. So and we're gonna just do fill, uh, and in here I'm going to accept the pointer to the pixels, uh, and also I'm gonna accept the width and height. Right. So the library uh, does not really know the size of the canvas at compile time, even though it is sort of like you know visible here. Uh, the library has to be general enough and it should not assume any size of the canvas, right? So, and on top of that, we're gonna actually fill it with uh, a cer certain color, right? So we're gonna also provide the color in here, there we go. 
So, uh, Tsar Jakob, th thank you so much for for a month of Twitch Prime subscription. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and welcome, welcome everyone. Um, so, so many subscriptions today. Thank you, everyone. Even though I didn't get anything, so but yeah, I really appreciate that. So, there is an interesting thing. Um, quite often, uh, people also provide this stride, right, which is the size of the row in bytes right so this is usually needed for the case when an image has some sort of a padding we're not going to implement it right now right so i don't want to like think about it too much right now so what i want to do i want to just implement the functionality of the library right and then once we have a functionality if there is something that needs to be like padded properly or anything like that all of that could be implemented like off screen later so right now what i'm focusing is what i'm focusing on is features right um so what we're gonna do i'm gonna start iterating things um so I'm going to iterate uh, y from 0 to uh, height, right, so this is the height, so I'm iterating the rows, right, and then I'm going to be iterating the columns, right, there we go, so this is the columns, and uh, then I need to find the, the pixel, right, so essentially the, the rows are stored sequentially in the memory, right, so it's stored row-wise, um, so if we if we have two two dimensional image, what we do we just take all of the rows and just straighten it up in the memory, right, into a single row, right. So essentially, what we need to do we need to skip a certain amount of rows. We need to skip y rows. The size of a single row is the width, right. So that means this is how many pixels we have to sort of skip in here, right. And then uh, we're going to be pointing at the beginning of that specific row in the memory. And then uh, we need to offset to a specific pixel in here. So this is how we essentially computing, uh, computing the, the pixels. So and then we're going to just set this entire thing uh, like so. What's interesting is that uh, this entire stuff probably can be replaced with memset, but memset actually sets a single um, a single character. Though we can actually straighten up this entire two-dimensional loop, if you know what I mean. So we can do something like i less than multiplication of width and height right and in here we can do pixels i equal to color so for the compiler i feel like this is going to be easier to optimize or maybe even vectorize right because we don't really care about whether it's two-dimensional or like one-dimensional or three-dimensional we need to fill the entire thing with a certain color so that means we can just iterate uh, all of that sequentially and just set that color right there's nothing particularly special about this thing in here <clears throat> all right so let's actually see if it's going to work so i leave it uh, and i'm going to just provide the pixels right, so this is the pixels this is the width this is the height and what's going to be the color let's actually fill everything with the red right so but this is not particularly useful because i want to be able to see what i just generated so let's actually save this entire thing to ppm so maybe uh this thing is also going to be like saving to ppm is also going to be part of the um of the library because why not so we're going to say uh save to ppm file right and we're going to provide pixel with width and height and uh also the file path right, so let's put it in here so but saving to a particular file may actually fail so maybe it would make sense to actually return an integer to indicate what sort of stuff has happened right so this is going to be in 32 and uh, this one is going to be size width and then size t height and then in here is going to be const char file path all right so how are we going to be implementing all of that how are we going to be implementing all of that so this one is rather interesting so essentially what we need to do we need to open a file right we need to open a file f open 
uh, and I need to provide the file path and I need to open that file for writing, right? So I'm going to open it for writing. I'm going to also say binary and uh, there you go. If this entire thing uh, has failed, right? So if f is equal to null, I want to return maybe like minus one to indicate that something went wrong, um, right? So then uh, what I want to do, I want to write some data into into that file right i want to write the ppm header if you're not familiar with the ppm uh, format uh, you can google that so uh, specifically we're going to be using p6 uh, variation of the format uh, right so i wonder if there is like a good uh, explanation of this thing somewhere here right i think yeah, this one. So you put P6, then the size of the image, then 255 for whatever reason, and then you provide the binary data. Uh, right, so that's essentially what we're doing. Uh, and maybe I'm gonna give the link to this thing in here for anyone who's interested in that. And also I'm gonna put that in the description as well. So do I have description? Yes, here is the description. So PPM format. Mm, PPM format, uh, and this is going to be P6, new line, width, height, 255, and new line again. So this is going to be width, this is going to be uh, height. What's interesting is that um, I want to check whether writing this entire string didn't error. Uh, so essentially you can check that by calling function f error, which checks whether the uh, error flag of the file is set up. And in that case, you want to return minus one, but you should not forget to close uh, this entire file, right? You should not forget to close it. So, you know, in a modern proper languages this day, what you usually have is essentially a defer statement, right? So you can sort of like defer closing the file and you never have to worry about closing or not closing any of the resources, right? And it's quite important actually because you have like a working piece of code, right? You have a working piece of code that takes into account closing the file. Right, if you add more resources up there, you should not forget to go down and update all of these pieces in here to also close these resources. And if you remove some resources, you should also not forget to update all of these things. It's, it's a freaking mess. Right, in the modern languages, you have defer uh, statement to actually make your life a little bit easier, so you never have to think about deallocating all of that stuff. But like unfortunately we don't have that uh, stuff in c right we don't have that stuff in c unless we can try to imitate that right because defer is not a magic right defer at the end of the day when you write defer go compiler generates some code some actual assembly code right so and the question is what exactly does it generate maybe we can just write that manually Right, so what exactly does it do? So defer, um, as the name suggests, it actually defers uh, the, the statements, right? It defers the statement. And it defers them uh, until the end of the function, at least in Go, right? So in other languages, it defers it until the end of the scope, but in, in Go, it uh, defers that uh, until the end of the function. So we can do a similar thing in here as well, right? So we can put f close. Uh, in here, right? And uh, so the thing we're gonna do, uh, we're gonna mark it with uh, a flag, a, a label, not a flag, a, a label, defer, right? And every time you wanna return, you actually don't return, you go to defer, right? So instead of uh, return, you do go to defer. Uh, so Instead of your return, you use go to refer. But this thing does not allow you to, um, how to say that, to sort of like set the return value, right? So you can go to the return, but you cannot return a specific value. So for that, we can introduce a special result, right? By default, it's going to be zero and we're returning zero. And right before we want to return, we're going to set return to minus one, right? Uh, return to minus one. 
there you go so there is another problem in here if f is null f close is gonna sec fold so before doing this thing you want to check whether this thing is not uh, is not null right so you're only gonna close it if it actually was allocated so what's interesting is that um you always kind of want to set the result before doing doing go to defer to the point that it kind of makes sense to turn it into a special macro right so let's actually call this macro something like return defer right it accepts the value and the thing is going to do it's going to set the result to that specific value and then go to to defer uh, all right so and then it's going to be by zero so instead of uh, doing this thing you can do return defer minus one and then return defer minus one there you go and you kind of went back to the original code that we have it's just like instead of using return you use return defer right so there's like it's it's the same code like you can replace return defer uh, to return and there you go so and if you add more resources in here right if you uh, like uh, create more files in here you don't have to go to all of the places where you return you only have to go down in here and just like add another file in here right so this is going to be f1 so you see like you reduce the amount of places where you you have to uh, call all of that so essentially it's like you took all of the defer statements and you composed them uh manually into a single place yourself right um all right so interestingly enough uh so there's a lot of a, a little bit of a problem in here right so with error no right because f close may actually override error no if uh it if it uh fails right so if it fails and this is the problem with error no like error no is quite a crappy solution uh so the only reason why we like why error no was introduced is because c does not support multiple return values uh so and uh, yeah it, this is literally the only reason like if c supported multiple return values you would never have to introduce error no and you would never have any problems related to that like a single simple feature would make the life of so many developers easier but it just doesn't exist so we have to deal with this stupid error now right and what i uh, decided to do like every time i have to do this kind of stuff like i'm gonna literally return error no right so in here we're gonna have zero and uh i'm gonna just re return error no right and to indicate that uh my function returns error no uh, i'm gonna create a special alias uh error no there we go that's basically what i what i like to do uh, every time i program in c uh dev sim sec thank you so much for twitch subscription thank you thank you thank you <clears throat> all right i also would like to take all of the files the um, all of the variables that are related to uh defer that are used in defer section right and put them up top and initialize them with something like so all right so and essentially separate the sort of like a main body of the function from the header and the footer right so yeah essentially you have a little bit of a border plate to enable the first the first statements right so you, you have a header where you initialize you declare the result variable and you declare all of the variables that need to be deallocated and defer and then in the footer you just deallocate them if they were allocated right so essentially you also have to check if it was allocated already and here's the main body and then here you just treat return defer as the regular defer right as the regular return uh which is rather convenient right so okay i was gonna do the next thing so we need to iterate now uh all of the pixels and we need to save them so i can actually iterate them uh similarly as i do with uh with a few right so this is gonna be that it's gonna be width and height plus plus i 
<clears throat> and in here, uh, I need to extract a single pixel, right? So let me quickly do that. This is a pixel, pixels I. And I need to extract the components, right? So PPM supports only RGB, it doesn't support alpha, so we have to skip the alpha. Uh, so I also want to save all of that into bytes. So we have uh, three bytes in here. So, and in RGB32, uh, we have the following components, right? RR, GG, BB, AA, like in that specific, <clears throat> in that specific order. So we have to take the pixel uh, and just do uh, FF, right? So essentially we only take this particular part. So then uh, I need to extract G. Uh, so that means I have to shift it by a single byte and then mask it yet, yet again. And then if I want to extract blue, I need to shift it by two bytes, right? So, and then mask it again. So here we can say that I'm actually shifting by one byte. And then here for the sake of symmetry, right? I'm going to say that I'm shifting it by uh, zero bytes. So that's essentially what we're doing here. Might as well just in case like wrap it in parentheses. And there we go. So we have bytes in here. And we need to save those bytes into, into the file as well. So we're going to do f write bytes uh, size of bytes and it's uh, saving a single thing in here. And if saving the bytes has failed, if it has failed, I'm going to return defer uh, error null. There we go. So that's basically it. So, and what's cool with this approach of defer is that the, your code is not polluted too much with error messages, right? So it's not polluted too much. Uh, you, you still uh, do this, uh, like you still check for the errors, but it's just like a one single line and you don't have to think whether you have to close the file. Like here, you obviously don't have to close the file. Here, you have to close the file. You, you never have to think about that, right? So essentially, you encounter an error, you just bail off, and like the allocation, all of that is gonna be done for you by this specific section, and you manage this section, right? So yeah, so it's, it's really close to how you would do that like in a more modern language that has defer statements uh, and stuff like that. So essentially, like in C, you have to emulate that. Mm, right. Okay. So let's let's actually build this entire thing and let's go to the errors. So we need uh, a std int. We need a std int and uh, we need a semicolon in here. Uh, error no. So to have error no, I also have to uh, put it in here. So pixels. Uh, what's up with pixels? Fill accepts pointers to the pixels. Uh, is not compatible pointer. Right, so essentially what it wants from me, if I understand correctly, right, since it's just like I always have to pass a pointer, it doesn't really make any sense for me to make it like a two dimensional array. So I'm gonna make it one dimensional uh, of the size of two dimensional, I think. Yeah, there we go. So, okay, uh, that's pretty cool. Let's try to uh, run the example and example went successfully and it generated a single ppm uh, file and it's filled with a red right. uh, it is filled with red so we can actually try to fill it with something else so for example with green right so let's give it a try so we can build a sage example and there we go so uh, if we open this thing it's green so it would be also nice to maybe handle this entire thing right so this is going to be error no error right and if we encountered error uh, we're going to say that we couldn't save that specific file so maybe it would also make sense to actually uh, put it into a separate variable right const char file path and we put it in here and printf std error error could not save file uh, this uh, file path str error error no and i'm gonna actually exit with one there you go so str error is not available because i also have to include string and there you go there you go and uh, we can actually test that for instance 
what if I create a folder with the name output ppm? Right, output ppm, and I'm gonna try to run this entire thing. As you can see, it fails. Could not say file uh, is a directory, so everything is actually working correctly, more or less. Uh, all right, so everything is handled properly. Cool. So uh, I think the time has come to maybe move all of that stuff to uh, to the to the file itself. Wait. So let me just actually put it put it in here. Boom. Cool. Mm -mm. So the next thing. Um, Probably the easiest primitive to render in your custom library uh, is a rectangle, right? So let's actually go ahead and do that. Uh, fill rect. We're going to accept the pixels. You uh, in 32, 32t. So this is the pixels. Uh, width, height, and uh, we probably need to accept the. Uh, position and the size, right? So I'm gonna accept x, y, uh, width, and height, which is actually a little bit confusing. So, so we have a width and height of pixels, and this is width and height of what rectangle, I suppose, right? So maybe here I'm gonna say pixels width and uh, pixels height, uh, but I'm a little bit afraid that it's gonna be like too much, especially when I'm gonna be computing the the index for, for that specific pixel, so I'm not 100% sure. So, and the reason why I'm actually passing all of these things separately and not creating um, like a structure, right? things like struct, uh, canvas, right, where I'm gonna put all of these things, right, so this is the canvas, and then maybe I'm gonna have a rectangle, my own rectangle. Uh, basically, if I do that, I'm sort of forcing the user to use uh, these specific structures, right? And maybe the user wants to have their own structures, right? So maybe it's not going to be structures at all, right? So maybe these components are coming from different places from several structures. You, you never know. You want to be as generic as possible. So in, in that case, it's just like easier to spill that structure into the arguments right and not assume any specific structure just like put them separately and the user can decide however you uh however you want that however you want to use that so yeah. uh, all right so and by the way here i'm using int instead of uh, size. Size is unsigned right so it cannot be negative but int can be actually negative Right, so which makes sense for x and y, but doesn't really make sense for width and height, right? So maybe I have to change that. I'm, I'm not really sure. So maybe I'm gonna change uh, this thing to size t, uh, size t, something like that. We'll see. Mm, all right, so and let me go ahead and just feel that specific thing. So maybe I'm gonna also do something like like this right and in here we're going to do size t which is like y. Uh, so we're gonna be just like iterating this entire rectangle. So for size t, maybe in, in fact this is actually dy. It's a, sort of like a delta y. Uh, dx, dx less than width, and then plus plus dx. And then here we're gonna compute the actual proper uh, proper x. So x is gonna be equal x zero plus um, plus dx, right? So um, this is sort of like the, the, the corner, right? And then this is the, the delta. Uh, and uh, maybe some way here, we're also gonna have y, uh, dy. But here is an important thing. Here is an important thing. Um, so this is size. Mm. Mm -hmm. Could be negative and i'm not sure like i suppose it has to be 
You know what, I'm gonna be using integer for, for all of these things uh, because I'm a little bit afraid. You know what, no, I'm gonna just like literally I can convert it to int, but who said I cannot just use int in here? Right, there we go. Okay, so we need to check that all of that stuff is within the range, right? All of that stuff is within the range, uh, so that means x has to be uh, greater or equal than, than zero, and then we have something like uh, pixels, pixels width, right? And the same goes for y. So this is y and this is height. What's interesting is that we can move checking for y in here and never even do any iterations horizontally, right? So essentially we can check up front uh, whether that specific row is correct. And if, it's, if the row is out of bounds, we're never gonna even try to iterate the columns, right? I think it kind of makes sense, right? And in here we have that. So we know for a fact that x and y are within the available range. So that means we can do x, uh, y multiplied by pixels height uh, plus x. And we also have to specify the color, right? So it's going to be uint uh, 32t, the color, right? So this is going to be the color. Uh, all right. And uh, yeah, that's basically what we have in here, right? So we filled the entire sort of like background with the red. So let's actually fill it with something grayish, right? So let's actually fill uh, the background with something grayish and see how it goes. Uh, so this entire thing, um, you can't really compare it. So it has to be integer. The only reason why I'm accepting it as size T is because I don't want it to be negative. All right, and this thing is still that. Though interestingly, I know that y is positive, so it means I can I can do it like no, not really. So it means I need to make this an integer, and probably this an integer. Yeah, there we go. So, and if I take a look at the output now, right now, so this is grayish, right? So this is grayish. Uh, let me, let me see. And now what I'm going to try to do, I'm going to just fill a specific rectangle, right? So all of C fill, uh, fill rect. So it's pixels, width, height, uh, right. And let's actually do something like maybe 2020 FF. And I just want to have um, a red rectangle somewhere there, right? So it doesn't really work. Uh, because why? Because I have to provide the rectangle itself. So it's going to start at 0, 0. And the size of this rectangle is going to be like maybe 20 by 20, right? So maybe 20 by uh, 50 by 30. So I want it to be like a horizontal one, right? Uh, I want to be like a horizontal one. There you go. And as you can see, something went horribly wrong. Right, so something went horribly wrong. So let's actually try to find out what exactly went wrong. So in here, uh, where is the fill rect? Uh, so I'm actually looking at this, this uh, main.c. Where is the main? Oh, it's not main.c, it's called example.c. So it has to be multiplied by width, not by height. Uh, let's actually try to rerun it. And there we go. Here is the small rectangle. So we can actually try to maybe make that rectangle at the center. Right. So here we can, uh, we can have something like uh, RW. So it's going to be 50. And this is going to be 30. Right. So and maybe I want to actually center this entire thing. So in center is going to be width um, divided by 2 and height divided by two as well. So this is basically the center, R, W, R, H, right? So let's actually run this entire thing and I'm gonna open it. And as you can see, it is in fact at the center, but it's only its corner is at the center. The rectangle itself is not particularly centered, right? So what we wanna do is probably, um, 
subtract half of the width of the rectangle itself, right? And also half of the height, uh, like so. There we go. Uh, so let me open that. So now it is centered, more or less. We can make it a little bit bigger so it's, it's possible to see. It. So we can multiply this entire thing by, uh, by four. Uh, because why not? We can, we can actually do that. Uh, there we go. So this is uh, basically the rectangle. Isn't that cool? Isn't that cool? I think it's pretty freaking cool. Mm. Another thing we can do, we can uh, probably just like implement like a checker pattern, right? Um, just to, you know, just to test that more extensively, if you know what I mean. Uh, just to test that a little bit more extensively. Uh, so, but we need to decide like how many rows and how many columns are we going to have. So let's maybe introduce that stuff somewhere. So we're gonna have columns. Um, I don't even know, we can have like... Uh, so let's actually use the amount of cores as this digit, right? So we're going to have eight columns and six rows, which will make the uh, cell width and height equal to 100, right? So that's basically what we're doing in here. So, and this is rows, actually. So this is rows. Uh, cell width is going to be equal to width divided by columns. Right? And height is going to be equal to uh, height divided by rows. Mm -hmm. So, and what we need to do in here is essentially just a loop, right? So this is going to be something like size t y. Uh, I'm going to actually do like this y less than uh, rows uh, plus plus y, and then we're going to have x x less than columns plus plus x. And let's do the filling. Let's do the filling. So how can you do the checker pattern, right? So essentially you take the sum of x and y, right? And you check whether this thing is divisible by two, right? So, and if it is divisible, you use one color. If it is not, you use a different color, right? So you can do something like you insert it to t color, right? And then here, if it's divisible, you use the red color. Uh, like so. Uh, otherwise, you use a green color, right? Something like that. So, what we're gonna do in here? Uh, so, I'm gonna take x uh, and y and multiply them by cell width and cell height. So, can you see actually anything? I don't think you you can see anything. I should actually put something behind my camera so I know what you can see and what you cannot see, right? So I can adjust uh, my stuff accordingly, right? So for, for example, right now, I know that you can't see shit in this mist. And now you can see shit in this mist, okay? So it's the cell width and cell height. So you see, I care about the, you know, experience of, of, of my watchers, of, of my viewers, yeah. Uh, so, all right, all right, all right. Okay, so let's actually uh, try to compile that and see if it works or not. There we go. So, uh, there we go. So we have a checker partner. Isn't that cool? I think it's pretty cool. <laughs> so, you can do stuff like that now. Uh, right, so you can feel the rectangle. You can actually feel the rectangle. Uh, all right. So let me let me see. Mm, maybe I'm gonna make it actually a little bit more pretty because the the colors are a little bit too harsh, right? If you know what I mean, they're a bit too harsh. So it would be nice to actually make them less harsh. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. So I'm gonna go to the example and I'm gonna move fill rect to. Olive There we go. Mm -hmm. 
field erect successfully. Okay, moving on. So, you know what? You know what? I think I have a feeling that I actually need to also save this example, but a little bit later. So, for now, what we're gonna be doing? Well, what we're gonna be doing? Uh, I'm gonna put it in here. And I also think that I need to save the background color. So background color, uh, FF20, background color, seven, like this. So this is a background color. Uh, can I make it like so? All right, so I'm gonna make the default color a background color. Right. Otherwise, this one is going to be something like a red. Uh, so hopefully this thing is going to look a bit better. Yeah, there we go. That looks actually cool. That is actually really, really cool. I really like that. So, and we probably want to save that into like its own file, right? So this is going to be checker uh, example, right? So we have a checker example. Mm, and... Um, yeah, we probably want to move this entire thing to a separate, uh, a separate procedure, right? So generate. Uh, let's actually call it checker uh, example, right? And I'm gonna move this entire stuff there, right? In checker example. So interestingly, maybe this thing should return a boolean that indicates that this thing has failed, right? Because this thing can fail uh, if we couldn't file to the file. So we want to indicate that as well in here. So and if this thing failed, we're going to just return uh, minus one, right? Essentially, we're not going to do any logging because the function itself does the logging, uh, but we're going to check its you know return value, something like that. Uh, so, this is the checker example. Mm -hmm. Now, what's going to be the next thing? We need to generate the circle, right? So, let's do the circle example. Uh, circle example. And then here, we're going to return true. So, let's fill everything with that. And also in here, uh, we're gonna put this thing like that. So this is a circle uh, example. Uh, let's actually not call it example because it's too long, All right? So we're gonna just have checker and circle. Uh, and if not circle example, return minus one. Uh, go, I'm gonna just like, do it like that and uh, control flow reaches blah blah blah. Why does it reach it? Oh, because we don't we don't even have boolean. Okay, so we need to include uh, std boolean. There we go. Uh, cool. So and it worked. So checker works as usual. And the circle we don't have anything in circle yet because we haven't implemented uh, you know a thing that renders the circle. Uh, right. So let's go ahead and do that. Should be pretty straightforward as well. So on it fill circle. Fill circle and what do we provide? We provide the pixels, right? So we provide the pixels. Uh, pixels size t pixels width and size t pixels height. Uh, is PPM the easier format to implement? I don't know if there are easier formats, but uh, the procedure that saves stuff into the PPM file is roughly 28 lines of code without any third-party dependencies, except maybe libc, but even libc can be gotten rid of. You, you probably can get rid of uh, uh, libc and use like linux uh, linux syscalls directly right because like they're directly mapped to linux syscalls you just can open the file write some stuff in there and there you go so that's the entire implementation of the ppm format can you come up with the easier format 
Well, I mean, you, you can always come up with something simpler. I mean, not easier, but simpler. Uh, but here's the thing. Is there any established format that is supported by some viewers, some image viewers, that is simpler than PPM, right? So the thing that makes PPM cool is not that it's simple. It is simple and it, you know, it's pretty cool, but it's not the main thing. It's also an established format. It's a conventional format, right? And uh, there is a lot of libraries and there are a lot, uh, a lot of uh, image viewers that support this format. So we can just dump this thing and open it in a, in a viewer. Right, so you can come up with a simpler format, but it's not going to be supported by so many libraries, so many viewers and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Right. It's like, it's not the format itself that makes it cool. It's the format availability. It's like JavaScript, right? Nobody programs in JavaScript because it's a good language. It's a pretty shitty language. The only reason people program in this JavaScript is because everyone has a browser. So you can write a piece of code in JavaScript and run it on any computer. So that's what makes JavaScript cool. Not because it's somehow a good language. It's a, come on, this is pretty bad language. But the fact that you can run that piece of code anywhere, that's what makes it cool. Right. So the same with, with PPM. Same with PPM. Okay. So let's do the fill circle thingy. Right. So we're gonna accept CX, CY, which constitutes the center of the of the circle, and we're gonna accept the radius. And we're also gonna accept the color of the synthetic. There we go. <laughs> Okay, then. so what we're going to be doing, we're going to be using, you know, the, the usual trick where we're going to just like take a rectangle, like surrounding the circle, like surrounding the circle. Mm -mm, mm -mm. And uh, we're going to iterate each individual pixel, uh, each individual pixel and just check uh, that that specific pixel is within uh, within the circle, right? So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, we probably need to define something like um, Hmm, interestingly, I think I want to make it size T to indicate that it's uh, gonna be it's it, it could not be negative, right? So it cannot be negative. So we're gonna have x1 equals cx minus R, right? So I actually kind of in here. So and this is going to be Y. This is Y, right? And here is going to be two, but instead of minus, it's going to be plus. All right. So after that, uh, I'm going to be just like literally iterating, starting from X1, uh, then X2 plus plus X, right? And then four int Y, Y1, Y less y2 plus plus y so and uh, yeah what we need to do we need to first check that x and y are within the boundaries of the uh of the canvas itself right so if actually i, I usually iterate like a row wise so it makes sense for me to actually swap these things around and uh maybe because of that it also makes sense to first check the boundaries uh, like so less than pixel height right, so we check the boundaries there we go then for zero less x x less than pixels width right and we know for sure that everything is within the boundaries of the canvas that we're currently using right now what we need to do we need to check whether the uh the point is within the circle right so we need to find the distance from the center so we're going to do dx and we're going to just find how uh, far it is from the center right and um so to know the distance what you have to do you have to take square right and you have to use square root right uh, 
less or equal than the radius. But the, you, the interesting trick that I actually uh, explained multiple times is that you can actually square both of the parts of this equation, right? And it's going to be something like that. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. Okay, thank you, Kumbek. I was about to actually do that. <laughs> thank you so much. I, I think it's a bot. Like, it just, like, probably generates, like, random random messages. Uh, all right. So, if it is within um, the, the circle, what I want to do is just, like, pixels. Um, y multiplied by pixels height. Right, so pixels height plus x equal to the color. Equal to the color. There you go. So, that's pretty straightforward. Um, hello, hello, uh, Lego Megger. Hello, welcome, welcome. Okay, so let me actually build this entire thing, and it is failing in here. Mm, so, because I need to do that cost. And what else do we have in here? Mm, statement with no side effect. How come? Oh, because it's four. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> very funny, all right. So, and what else do we have in here? Uh, less or equal R. Okay, so I'm not quite sure, not quite sure. If I make it integer, somebody makes it like negative. What if I make it integer, somebody makes it negative. Uh, so I feel like, yeah. Maybe I shouldn't care about that. Maybe it's totally fine. All right. Uh, all right. Anyway, so let's actually try to call this uh, fill circle and see how how it goes. Okay. So in, in circle in here, circle example, we filled everything up. So this is pixels. Uh, then width. Then height. And what's going to be the center? Let's actually put that at the center of the canvas. Right, so this is going to be height divided by 2, and the size is going to be like 100. And the color is going to be um, uh, the cool red color that we use for foreground. You know what? I think like we already have a background color. What about like having a foreground color? Um, so I think it's a pretty cool idea. So I'm going to define it like background, I want it to do foreground, foreground color, uh, like so. Mm. Is there a way to code some animation and save it in a simple video format as you do with PPM? This is a good question. Like, I was trying to answer that question for some time, and I think we even found like a simple video format. But it's not that simple, unfortunately. Uh, I forgot what it's called. Um, do you guys remember like two pack for you or something like that? Uh, for you, yeah, yeah, two impact for you. Uh, two impact, yeah. So the format is called the format is called U four impact two. This is a pretty elaborated uh, like name, but uh, you can find it in here. But it is as simple of a format as possible that is available today. And it's actually rather complicated, right, for a simple format. Uh, but at least it uses like a row pixels. Uh, essentially, I don't even remember what you have to do. Um, so you have a render somewhere yeah first of all you use this um you know format of the pixel like ycbcr oh boy and you have to like remember this formula of conversion between rgb and ycbcr and then you have to save it in different planes then you have a, a bit complicated uh, header for this entire thing and to, to be fair the, the whole format can be implemented like in 88 lines of code but unfortunately you can't really memorize this 88 lines of code that's the problem right so the, the cool thing about uh, ppm is that even though it's like 22 lines of code it's easy to memorize 
Right, it's it's rather easy to memorize. This one is a little bit bigger, and maybe it is justified for video format, but it's kind of hard to memorize this shit. Right, so uh, I'm gonna give that link to like in here. And by the way, maybe it makes sense to actually put that in description as, as well. This is a very good question, right? So I wish there was uh, a simple format for video, but I don't feel like it exists. Maybe we can try to create one. Right, so I, I think I was thinking about that idea. So essentially just document a simple video format and try to propose like supporting that format for like video player, like M player, at least add it to M player and see how it goes from there. So something like that. <clears throat> Is the GIF format simple? No. <laughs> First of all, GIF is really limited in terms of like color depth and stuff like that. And it is extremely complicated, like holy shit. Even with the library that allows you to parse the GIF, it's rather complicated format. So, and I mean, it's not that complicated, right? It's not that complicated, but we're talking about the PPM level of simplicity, right? So, and nothing beats PPM in terms of simplicity that is established, right? So, I wish there was something like that, but I, I don't think there is. All right, so, and this is how you, you implement this thing, but it's, it's in Rust, right? So, uh, implementation, implementation in Rust. Implementation in Thrust. Um, however, it makes sense that grid pixel format use uh, YCBCR because all TV showed images pixels uh, by pixel using YCBCR. Yeah, it does make sense, but it doesn't really fit our goal, our purpose. Uh, Derm compression makes things complicated. Yes, it, it does in fact makes things complicated. I do agree with that. Mm -hmm. An array of PPM will be huge, but would be okay as intermediate format to later encode or something else. Yeah, PPM is definitely the not the format for storing, right? Uh, it's it's format for generating. Uh, if you want to store images, you probably want to use something else. And that's for sure. Just different purposes, like different formats for different purposes. Okay, so uh, let's actually just you know call circle and uh, we have a foreground color in here so let's actually set the foreground color like so uh, and let's recompile mm -mm. okay let me take a look at the circle and i made the same mistake but it does look like a circle already which is which is quite good uh, and I really like the, uh, how I make literally the same mistake over and over again. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, so we have a circle and there, there you go. Isn't that cool? Isn't that cool? Oh, I think it's pretty fucking cool. And, you know, we can always generate uh, a Japan flag. Right. Are you guys ready for a little bit of a Japan flag? We can do that. Uh, so let me, let me try to do that. FF, 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 and a boom, circle, there you go. That's pretty cool. And it's completely from scratch, by the way. Completely from scratch. Using only school math formulas. School math formulas. And after that, people say that school is useless. Look at me. I'm using whatever people were taught in school as a content on Twitch. Hmm? Hmm? Can your average gamer streamer do that? I don't think so. I don't freaking think so. They can't even make Minecraft gameplay interesting and I take the shit that you're taught in school and make it fucking interesting. I'm sorry. <laughs> Anyway, uh, so <clears throat> the 
just continue. Uh, so this is going to be circle. I, I want to do something more interesting, right? So, for example, for checker, uh, we have a grid. Uh, what if we also generate a grid, but the grid of circles? You know what I mean? Like the grid of circles. We, we can try to do that, right? I think it's a, it's a good idea. So uh, let's go. Uh, let's do iteration uh, zero, and we're gonna have rows, right? Plus plus y. Mm -hmm. For x x less than calls plus plus x right so and in here uh we're gonna use a slightly different center so it's gonna be x multiplied by cell uh width x uh, multiplied by cell height right but that will actually generate the circles in a rather strange place uh, so also I want to do the following thing. I want to use cell. No, I need to do the radius, right? And the radius is going to be cell width. But if cell height is less, we're going to use that instead. All right. So that's what we're going to be using in here. There we go. So and if I open circle, this looks like shit. That is extremely cool. I wonder why the fuck it looks like that. <laughs> All right. So this is because I used X and X. I should have used X and Y. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, let's take a look at that one more time. Boom. It looks very, very big. Uh, it looks very, very big. I wonder why. So it shouldn't be that big. So essentially i think it has to be like half of that right so we have to cut that in half right and there and now we're talking but it's shifted because the center is at the left top corner of the cell right to fix that what we need to do we actually need to add uh, cell width half of the cell width and half of the cell height there we go so that's what we do uh, and uh, let me see if I open that. So this is the grid of the circle. Isn't that cool? I think it's pretty cool. But it would be nice if they're radii. I think the multiple of radius is radii. Uh, would vary. Vary, not vary, vary. I, I don't speak English, I'm sorry. I, I don't distinguish between V and W. I don't understand why you need two separate players like that. <laughs> so, uh, uh, all right. So let me see. How can we? How can we do all of that? So we can just like use the UV coordinate thingy, majingi. You know, so essentially you can establish the following thing. So I'm going to write a pseudocode, right? So you have X uh, divided by columns and you have V, U divided by rows, right? So in essentially, you just take a sum of U and V, right? But that sum, since these things are from 0 to 1, uh, from 0 to 1, uh, this specific sum is going to be from 0 to 2, so we have to divide it by 2 to bring it back to 0 to 1, right? And essentially, you have some sort of like a T, which you can use for, I suppose, interpolating, right? So you can do something like lerp from um, radius, half of the radius back to the full radius uh, using T. And that's going to be the, the actual radius, right? So this is how we're going to approach. This is what I would do if I was using floats, but I'm doing all of that in integers, uh, which is kind of the problem, right? So my usual approach to dealing with this kind of thing in integers is to actually like just um, expand this formula as much as possible and rearrange this thing so you don't lose any information. 
I, I think I already showed that trick before, right? But essentially, like every time I need floats, but I work with integers and I don't want to introduce the, uh, you know, the problems that floats introduce, like I do the following thing. Okay, u and v are x calls, like so, and y, y rows, like so. Uh, so we don't have u and v anymore. Uh, so, and then um, we can also expand the lerp, I suppose. Right, and, and by the way, so here, if we expand this thing, we basically end up with something like this. I'm not sure if this specific thing, specific thing is going to be useful, but I'm going to keep it in here, uh, just in case. So, what is lerp? Uh, lerp is something like this. It's a plus b minus a multiplied by c. Right. So that means here uh, we have a radius divided by 2 plus a radius minus a radius divided by 2, if I understand correctly, multiplied by t. All right. What's interesting is that uh, radius minus radius divided by 2 is probably just radius divided by 2. Right, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure it is just that. So, and then uh, we multiply it by by this thing, uh, which is also rather interesting, right? Which is also rather interesting. So we can try to expand this thing a little bit, uh, right? So, and we've got that. We've got essentially that. Uh, so you can clearly see that we have this stuff right can we actually sort of like expand this thing a little bit more and just keep it like this so this is going to be a radius uh, multiplied so this is one this one we don't have the radius this one we don't have the radius okay so we have something like that. Does that make any sense? I think it does make sense. Uh, interestingly... Mm -hmm, so I also want to remove this entire thing. <clears throat> so... The problem usually is that division like loses a lot of information, right? Division loses a lot of information. Uh, right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But maybe in this specific case, it's going to be fine. In this specific case, it's going to be fine. Um. Mm -hmm. So I'm just like not really sure why I ended up with this because yeah, I think I need to make a break. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. I think the time has come to make a break because I already can't kind of think, but yeah. All right, let's make some break and um, all right, let's just use floats. <laughs> all right, don't want to deal with that. Uh, we're gonna have float u, and I'm gonna just like convert it to float x divided by float uh, calls. Though calls is uh, literal, so I don't really have to do that. So this is u, and uh, this one is rows. Uh, then uh, I want to do t u plus v and we're going to divide it by 2. So maybe I also want to do it like that. Cool. And now uh, if we're going to be doing radius, so maybe I'm going to just like do lerp from um, I think like radius divided by 2 to radius uh, t and so here we decided on what's going to be the radius right so we decided what's going to be the radius uh oh and this one we're actually doing that 
so the radius 2 has to be the maximum so we have to divide it by 4 and this is divided by 2 uh, all right so and here I'm gonna be pasting this thing here so this is the radius and I probably have to convert it to size 2 right uh, we don't have a lerp but I can implement my own lerp thing here so float float a float b float t and i'm going to just return a plus b minus a multiplied by t all right all right all right all right <clears throat> Mm -hmm. And let's try to recompile this entire stuff. So it seems like it recompiled successfully first try, and there we go. So that's what I was talking about. Wasn't that cool? It's not cool. I think it could be even cooler if we just make it not like four, but like eight. Uh, yeah. There we go. So that's basically what I wanted to implement. <laughs> right. I wanted to implement that in, in integers, but in, in floats it's a bit easier. So what do you guys think about the circles or everyone already left? Um, I think everyone already left and nobody gives a shit. T has caffeine, yes. Lerp can be used for busy curves, yes. Can you increase the amount? Sure. Let's increase the amount. Uh, we can just multiply it by two, I think. So what if we double the amount of this shite and let's see how it's gonna go. There we go. Is it better? So we doubled the amount of those things. Cool dither in effect. Thank you. Yes, yes, yes. And all of that is done with our custom uh, graphics library that we implemented from scratch in uh, one and a half of an hour. Completely from scratch. Hmm? Can your OpenGL do that? I don't think so. All right, so, uh, I'm sorry. So let's actually go there. What I want to do, I want to move the field circle thingy to, to the library now. Right, so I'm going to put it in here. So, yes, 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 go away, freaking this. So, check your example. Cool. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, what's going to be the next primitive that we want to render? Right, I suppose we, we can, uh, we have rectangles, we have circles. So I think the time has come to implement maybe lines, right? So lines are going to be rather interesting. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, or leave it. Uh, draw line, right? Pixels. You uh, insert it to t pixels size t pixels width uh, size t pixels height and in here what we're gonna have we're gonna have probably like x1 y1 x2 y2 and the color you insert it to color uh, there we go so this is what we got. So we need to find our usual, um, you know, line formula. So what is the line formula? It's y equal uh, k multiplied by x plus c. And essentially we need to find uh, k and c for the line that has these two points on itself, right? So because of that, we have a system of equations. So the first system is essentially y1 is equal to k. Uh, multiplied by x plus c, actually x1, and the same thing in here, right? So what we want to do now, uh, we're going to try to find c. c is equal to that minus this, 
I might as well also align it like so. Uh, so, which means that C is equal to that, and we can substitute this T, this C, with this value, right? So let's quickly do that. So if we substitute it like that, this is what we have. Right, and as you can see, we have like a common, um, you know, factor in here, which we can factor out. Uh, minus x1, and we can remove this entire thing in here. So we can subtract y1 from both of the sides. Uh, right, so this one is going to be something like minus y1. There we go. And now we can divide both of these things by the x difference. Right. So this one is going to be something like this, and divided by that, and there we go. So might as well even go ahead and align globally by equals. But it's too much, it's unreadable, so I'm not going to do that. So, and there we go, we have formula. C is equal to that, and K is equal to that. Um, interestingly, we can just do the following thing. So we're going to have dx, which is, um, I suppose, x2 minus x1, and dy, I can just replace, clearly replace x, y. Uh, and then k is dy divided by dx, right, dy divided by dx. But you have to be a little bit careful in terms of, like, whether dx is equal to zero, right? So we already done that on Voronoi stream, right? So dx is not equal to zero, right? We're gonna do that. Um, not okay, and then we need to have c, which is y1 minus k multiplied by x1, right? What this thing is useful for? what this thing is useful for now we can essentially iterate uh, through each x right we can iterate through each x and for each x we can find a corresponding y if you know what i mean right a corresponding y and we can place a dot in there mm. all right so uh, let's quickly look and find that. But in this case, if, for example, dx is zero, that means we are dealing with the vertical line, right? We're just simply dealing with the vertical line and it should be pretty straightforward to actually draw such line. Uh, right, so let's quickly do that. So y is going to be, well, we have to do the following thing. So we're gonna assume that y1 is less than y2. Uh, if they're not, we want to swap them. Let's, let's implement swap uh, y1, uh, y2. Where is our swap? Mm -mm -mm. Okay, swap int, int um, a, b. Then I'm going to be iterating this entire stuff. Uh, y, um, it has to be y1, then we're going to do y2 plus plus y. And we also want to check that we are within the, uh, the canvas, right? y less than pixels height. And it's a vertical line. It's a vertical line. And that vertical line only makes sense if the x, right, if the x we're talking about is also within the, within the range. So what we need to do, we need to check that it is actually within the range. Uh, pixels width, there we go. I'm going to put this thing in here. Uh, and now I'm going to do pixels y multiplied by pixels width. I, I do remember that, and I'm going to put the color in here. So this is just a uh, you know vertical line, uh, nothing particularly special. Right. This is a simple vertical line. Here we have a more more of a diagonal line. Right. So this one is going to be a little bit more interesting. So if uh, we're also going to assume like x x one is actually it's the other way around. Swap int x1, x2. <clears throat> and so here we're going to be 
doing the following thing. For um, x1, x less than equal x2, um, plus plus x. And now, since we know k and c, we can compute the corresponding y by doing just like um, k multiplied by x plus c. And we have a corresponding y. So it's that simple actually. Uh, mm -mm. No. Uh, what do we need to check? What do we need to check first in of for the firmest help? Yeah. So first we have to do this thing x x less than pixel so width. And here we have to check for this thing. Mm, what we need to do, we, we just need to do the uh, the usual pixels. Mm -hmm. Y Mm, 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 mm. Sex color. So there we go. But we already know that this is not going to be. This is not going to particularly work, right? So it works for horizontal and vertical lines, and it works for like uh, forty-five degrees diagonal lines. But it's not going to work for different angles because there will be gaps so we'll try to see how we can actually get rid of these gaps uh, so let's go ahead and introduce lines example right so this one is going to be actually boolean uh, this one's true yeah though interestingly if it fails do i really care maybe, maybe i do care right if not lines, uh, turn this one. Yeah, there we go. So the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna fill everything with the background, and also here I'm going to save the file like so. This is gonna be lines, uh, lines ppm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Um, all right, so where is the line? Where is the line? Oh, by the way, lerp is used. Ah, it's not really used in the in the library itself. So yeah, so this is the draw line. And how we're going to be approaching this entire thing? Let me put it in here. So I provide the pixels. I provide the width. I provide the height. So, and let's just do a simple, a regular diagonal line throughout the entire thing. Uh -huh. and this is the foreground. Yeah, there we go. So, let's just try to run this entire thing. This one is integer, integer, and this one is integer and integer as well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so it's a vertical line, so we fucked up something. Nice. Uh, well, I mean, you, you can clearly see that it's located here for whatever reason, right? So something, something is definitely wrong in here, and I wonder what exactly. Uh, example: draw line. So here's this thing. And this must be a diagonal line. So uh, let's see where exactly we fucked up. So this is the difference in here. All right, so here we check for that stuff. If it's not equal to zero. Mm -mm. It's not equal to zero. So let me actually maybe debug this entire thing. You know what? I want to use like a proper debugger. Uh, do you guys know about GF? 
the GDB frontend. I recently started to use this thing uh, and it's actually quite cool. It is actually quite cool. So I'm going to put this thing in here. Um, and I'm going to also put that for people who are watching us on YouTube. Right. So let me just go ahead. So there is no binaries. I'm pretty sure. I think there is no binaries. Uh, but I'm going to build it myself. Right. So it's actually pretty easy to build. Um, oh, yeah. There's just a build script. Yeah. Let's just run the build script and that should be fine. Uh, and it failed? Are you serious? Don't... Somebody actually 25 days ago... Why is it broken all of a sudden? Excuse me. Uh, no matching, blah, blah, blah. Seriously. Update Windows CPP. Okay, I'm gonna go back here. Alright, what about here how is that broken excuse me all right just a second and i swear to god uh so it requires some third party dependency right so let me let me see uh, See, no matching function. I can't. I can't believe this shite. What about like? Okay, what if I use Clang instead? Can I just use Clang? Yeah, I should have just used Clang, I suppose. So I, I probably have a like very old G plus plus. That's probably the problem. Yeah. Okay, um, so let me go to master, so I have some local changes. It doesn't allow me to switch when I have a local changes and now I have to bring them back and do it one more time. Luckily, luckily this entire thing is so simple I can just like hack it. Uh, I can simply hack it. Yeah, boy, boy. Yeah, boy. Come on, bro. Okay, so if I take a look at GF2, there we go. Can I make it bigger? It's kind of. I can't see anything. Um, I guess it's fine. So, yeah, it basically has a classical uh, debugger interface, right? And it's front end for, for GDP, which is, which is kind of cool. All right, so what we're gonna do in here, we're gonna just like literally step debug this into, I think. Uh, let's go ahead and do that. So soft uh, software, mm, gf, gf2, example, but maybe I'm gonna actually run it and not compile it. Uh, what we wanna break, we probably wanna break uh, line example lines example so i'm gonna break it in here and i'm gonna run it and uh, oh i forgot to compile my uh, program with gdb stuff mm -hmm. so let's actually do that one more time right all right break lines example run and it looks like a proper debugger mm. Looks like a proper debugger. How about that? Isn't that cool? I think it's pretty freaking cool. So, and essentially what we can do in here, right? We can even like check different things, right? I can check pixels, for instance, in, in the watch window and it doesn't even show anything because like, yeah. Anyway, so uh, let's actually go and step into the draw pixels, right? So, and now I can, for instance, check DX and DY, right? So I have DX and DY and I can step through all of these things. So yeah, that means I go here and I compute these two things and I can check K and C. Both of them somehow ended up being uh, zero. And 
This is because I'm an idiot, right? So all of that stuff has to be computed in floats. That's what I forgot about, right? So yeah, so that was actually useful. That was actually pretty quick, as you can see. Mm -mm -mm -mm. So that's why step debuggers are very, very cool, because you can just go there and just see what's the problem very quickly extremely quickly in fact uh, without any printf or anything like that you just like you can check it uh, all right so let's go ahead and see how we can how we can fix all of that so maybe we should actually do all of that in floats uh, so let me get rid of this formula so dx and dy can be actually like that uh, it doesn't really matter but this stuff has to be float i'm pretty sure so it has to be float though in all fairness, does it really have to be float? Because if you put dx in here, like so, right, um, you can essentially just rearrange this entire thing to be like that, right? So c, as you can see, it's fine. So, and every time you need k, right, every time you need k, you can actually put it like this, and you can rearrange your x to be here. And that will work, I think. Yeah, and you can get rid of this stuff. Interestingly, so I use C only in a single place, so maybe that, okay, so I'm gonna just keep it like that. All right, cool. Mm. So let me take a look at some of the examples and where is the line? There we go, so here's the line. Isn't that cool? Thanks, Brie. Check the 56, hello. Uh, so, yes, 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 kawaii freaking dude. So, and all of that was enabled by the power of the debugger. Isn't that cool? So, this is zero, another one is gonna be like actually width. Uh, right, so, and the second point is going to be zero, but in terms of height, it's gonna be like that. So width zero and then height zero. Okay, so that, that probably makes sense. So let me rebuild the entire thing and let me see. Yeah, there we go. So do we have any gaps in here? We don't really have any gaps in here because everything is fine, but uh, I think we can create some gaps. Right, so let's try to create some gaps. I'm gonna grab this thing and I'm gonna put it in here. Uh, we're gonna start from here, but uh, in terms of width, I, th I think I'm gonna just like put two in here. Uh, and I'm gonna just put uh, FF 20, FF 20. So this is more of a, like a greenish color. Maybe it would make sense to even uh, get rid of these things. Right, so let's just go ahead and do that. And I think, here they are, here they are. I think we can even do that a little bit more dramatic by dividing it by four, right? So it's gonna be a little bit more steep. So we can clearly see that something is a uh, very sus in here. Mm -hmm. Something is extremely a uh, sus. So, uh, essentially we have some, you know, gaps. Uh, what's interesting is that I think we can fix it relatively easy. It's just by having like a nested loop, right? So we iterate in by X and then between the X point, we can iterate by Y. Who said we can't do that? We, we, we can actually do that, like, come on. We, we can do that. Uh, just to fill up those gaps. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. Uh, okay, go. So uh, this is x, we check that x is okay, but here is an interesting thing. <clears throat> so this is the, the first x and we need to compute sort of like the next one, if you know what I mean. We need to compute the next one. Uh, so how can I do that? Like I need to come up with a different name for it. Um, so an x, so, and it has to be, 
Mm, actually, something like x plus 1. Right, it has to be x plus 1. Uh, and I'm going to do the following thing. Do I want to get rid of that equals because I always sort of get the next one? Do I want to do that? Mm hmm. Do I want to do that? Maybe. But maybe that's fine. All right. Anyway. 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 So, and because of that, I also want to take n y. Right. Mm -hmm. And y is essentially dy multiplied by nx divided by dx plus c. Right. dx plus c. I'm running out of names. I, that's the problem in here. I literally ran out of things. <laughs> uh, all right. Running out of names. I hate that. Uh, okay. 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 So this is just the the current X. Right, this is just the current x. And you know what? I think the problem here is that I shouldn't introduce uh, an x. I can just do x plus 1 in here. So this is n, y. And because of that, uh, so I want to call this thing y1 and y2, but they're already taken. <laughs> That's the problem in here. It's just like, yeah, they are already taken. So let's call them like s, I don't know. And then I'm going to do something like, it also quite depends, right, if SY1 is greater than SY2, we want to swap them, right, SY1, SY2. Uh, and then I'm going to just start iterating them, SY1 less than SY2 plus plus Y, right. And we're going to double check all that stuff. There we go. <clears throat> so, yeah. So that looks good. Mm, oh, yeah, the classical. So, did you know that the difficult problem in programming is naming the variables? The classic meme. Okay, so let's continue. Uh, all right, so as you can see, everything is filled up perfectly. Perfectly. I would rather also check what if we put it like in a different angle, right on the opposite side, right? because I, I want to like double check all these things. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Where is that? Mm -hmm. So this is width, All right? So this is width height, and then here we'll have to do something like this, but multiply by three. All right? So something like this. Uh huh. Yeah. And that is that one is also good, I think. Yeah. Uh, all right. So let's try all of these things. So I want to take that part and maybe swap some of these things. So we're gonna start with width actually being here and something like that. There we go. So, uh -huh. all right. 
This is actually perfect. Uh, now this one. What about this one? So that one is more of a like this, so that means we'll have to swap um, this stuff. Yeah, 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 so we'll have to swap this stuff, okay. And... Okay, so these cases work fine. These cases work fine, I really like that. Uh, let's enable back those things. Mm -hmm. And something is deeply fucked up in here. Something is deeply fucked up, and I wonder what exactly. Maybe it actually makes sense to still put equals in here. So I wasn't sure if I want to put equals in here. It looks like I do want to put equals in there. All right, and that was actually confirmed. It's a little bit weird in terms of like this stuff. Maybe, maybe it's a bit weird, but it's not that much. So I didn't think it's that big of a problem. So it kind of made it like staircase but maybe that's fine. Maybe that's fine. Yeah, I, I think that's fine. Though, let me, let me put this thing like that. That's precisely where it becomes a problem. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. It's still staircase, yes. So, okay, I'm, I, I guess we can keep it, sure. Uh, at least for now, I'll just figure out something else later. Okay, so all of that is diagonal. What about like horizontal, literally horizontal? Uh, let me just draw a line, pixels, width, height, so let's give it a try. We're gonna start with width 0, and then we're gonna go to uh, and height divided by 2. Then we're going to have the full width, and the height is still gonna be divided by 2. So in terms of the color, we're gonna have FF2020. Uh, right, plus 2020, and let's see how it is going to go. Uh -huh. So here is the horizontal line. So it seems to be working, seems to be twerking. Uh, though I'd rather prefer it to be a little bit more bright, just a tiny bit more bright, because it's kind of difficult to see, but yeah, you, you can see everything in here. Um, now, I want to do a vertical one so it's going to be with that uh, zero is that height okay let's see if it worked and here's a vertical one so apart from this stary casey thingy i think lines work rather good right so i think they work rather good so we managed to implement the lines Managed to implement the line. This is actually very, very cool. Uh, okay, so let me probably just go ahead and um, commit this entire thing and upload it to uh, uh, to GitHub. Right, but all of that is going to be released under MIT. Uh, and what I'd like to do, maybe, is to convert all of the PPM files to PNG files, right? So let me actually find all of the PPM files. Here are all of the PPM, and I can do xargs, um, xx. Interestingly, what can I do? I think I can actually do maybe sed, where I would simply remove the PPM uh, extension, right? So what if I remove the PPM extension? Okay, that's fine. So and in here, I can do the following thing where I would uh, convert um, XX PPM to XX PNG. 
and there we go so i have a png versions of all of these things and this is quite important because now i'll be able to sort of include them in readme uh readme md so uh olive c simple 2d uh, graphics library for c all right uh quick start uh, uh, console console build sh uh, example uh, and then we can have something like a gallery how do you spell gallery with double l right so i, th I think it is done with double l so and let's just grab all of those things all right can i just uh, take a look at the PNG files. Right, so here are the PNG files. I'm gonna put them in here. Uh -huh. Like so. Boom. So here is the gallery. Mm -mm. Mm, okay. So let me let me see. So we probably want to git ignore uh, the ppm files, right? The generated ppm files. And I'm not sure. Do I want to do images? I just want to move all of the PNG stuff to there. Uh, PNG. This is another PNG. I'm gonna just move them here. All right. So and here. I'm going to just do mm, what I'm asking about images. There we go. Cool. Uh, let's do git init. Uh, let's do git init. And I also want to git ignore example. Uh, example executable. I didn't think it is particularly useful. So there we go. So ready, set. Uh, a go and let's go ahead and create the repo. Mm. Mm -hmm. So olive.c and uh, let me put it so simple to do graphics library for C. This one is going to be public, of course. Let's create the repo. The repo has been officially created and let's go ahead and add the remote so this is origin this is that and we're going to push that right into the repo there you go there you go it is officially pushed into the repo and look at that gallery isn't that cool i think it's pretty cool so and we implemented all of that in two hours and it's not really full implementation of everything i wanted to implement i also wanted to implement some triangles but i don't have time for that i think we're gonna do triangle stuff already next time you can find the source code in here license is mit you can t you can do whatever the fuck you want with this library except except claiming that you made it i know it is hard you have a permission to modify this library and even make money off of it but money worth nothing uh when you can't say that you made it imagine being like i just, I just imagine like you managed to sell this library for millions of dollars and you're sitting in your mansion crying and wiping your tears with the with the money because you can't say that you made it <laughs> you made a lot of money off of that but you can't say that you made it because you, you, that would be a violation of mit license Right, so let me actually put that to to the description as well. Right. So yeah, so this is the source code. Yeah. This is the most restrictive license out there. Doesn't allow you to say that you made this. Allows you everything except the most important thing. All right. So uh, does anyone have any questions? I'll use the money I make from Olive to invest in homes. <laughs> okay, nice one. 
so I wish I had time to actually implement triangles. I think triangles are the most interesting thing uh, because they give you an opportunity to take a look at the barycentric coordinates and this is something uh, that I wanted to look into for quite some time, but unfortunately we don't really have time uh, anymore. So I think I'm going to do another session and on that another session we're going to take a look into that. Uh, all right, does anyone have any questions? Does anyone have any questions, boys and girls? Thank you for the stream. Thank you for watching. Um... We'll be doing textures in this library. And to do textures, you actually need to load images. Maybe we'll do that. I don't know. So first, I want to implement the basic things, right? I want to just implement the basic things. So you, you need to remember the purpose of this library. So the purpose of this library is to be able to quickly uh, just prototype something or visually debug something without introducing too many third-party dependencies. So essentially, I've been doing something like that already for quite some time. Like every time I have some sort of a, like bug, right, I would like to maybe do some visual debugging by generating an image. And every time I would like just implement this uh, primitives myself over and over again. So what I decided to do is to just like put the things that implement over and over again into a separate simple library, right? So yeah, and how often do I use textures for like the quick visual debugging and stuff like that? Not very often, but maybe as I use this thing more and more, maybe I'll need more things and maybe it will actually surpass its original purpose. We'll see. So we'll have to see. Um, could it save a lot of errors if you had the function fill pixel instead of rewriting conversion of coordinate to array index? Maybe it could. But it's not that difficult to actually notice that you fucked up the coordinates because it becomes like very stripping. You know what I'm talking about, right? So I don't think it's that critical, I think. Uh, because if you just confuse the, the, the things, it's, it's like literally visible and you know exactly what, what to look for. So I don't think it's that big of a problem unless it is something like safety related. You don't want to accidentally like buffer overrun this stuff. But I would just generally recommend to not use this library in a, uh, you know, safety critical applications, right? <laughs> so maybe I should put it somewhere, but it's just like, it's not a particularly safe library for sure. Um, so yeah. All right, so I don't know, let's maybe rate somebody. So who should we rate, boys and girls? Do you have any suggestions? Do we have any Epic C developers currently streaming on Twitch in a science and technology? But it's not a science and technology section. Do you guys remember there was a science and technology section back in the days? Do you guys remember there was a thing like that? It's not a thing anymore. So, okay, um, I think we should rate Jessica Mac. Uh, she's probably, she's doing her game. So let's actually rate her. What do you do for money? What is money? Imagine getting money for what you're doing. Oh, Last Miles. I heard he was unbanned. Okay, let's actually rate Last Miles. I hope he's not completely drunk. All right. Uh, so I'm gonna rate Last Miles. So. Alrighty, get ready for the raid. Get ready for the raid, boys and girls. And I see you all next time. Love you all. Mm -hmm.